Hello everybody, welcome to Statistics and Theory. This is Dr. Vahid Aryadus here. In this video, I'm going to demonstrate how to do a t-test on RStudio. If you have not watched uh, my previous videos on uh, RStudio and getting started with it, uh, please watch these videos. I will leave the link in the description section of this, this, this current video. In addition, uh, you can find uh, the scripts and the codes uh, for the current demonstration in my GitHub account, uh, go to my GitHub account, click on uh, repositories, uh, multivariate data analysis, and under that you'll find the R code t-test. Uh, it's free, you can download it and use it in your data analysis. For uh, running a t-test, uh, we have three steps. Step one is the normality assumption checking. Uh, in order to do that, we first need to uh, call the psych package. Let me clear this window here, right here. Okay, so let's uh, call the psych package first. <clears throat> okay, there we go. Um, the way that you do it is basically you can put the cursor right here and hit control and enter on your keyboard or just highlight it and click on run on top of uh, the same window. Next, we want to get the normality statistics in addition to mean and standard deviation. Uh, this is done using the describe command. So you describe and then put this argument here. Uh, that's the name of your variables. So it's going to describe all of your variables. I'm going to hit control and enter again, and I'll get a bunch of statistics for my variables. Um, of interest are mean, and uh, skewness here, as well as, of course, the name of the variables, and standard deviation, which is right here, and skewness and kurtosis. Now, uh, how to interpret skewness and kurtosis is a different story. Uh, for this demonstration, I'm gonna stick with what a lot of people agree upon, and that is, if the two values fall between minus one and, uh, minus two and plus two, uh, we have evidence that they are normally distributed. Of course, for kurtosis, you can be more liberal. Um, and in these videos, I have discussed in a lot more details. I have provided references to some publications which uh, you can use and you can cite in your reports. Um, there are actually four. So please uh, look out for them in the uh, description section of this video. In addition, if you want to read more about these assumptions and also uh, the um, t-test in general, uh, you can take a look at two chapters of our book, Quantitative Data Analysis for Language Assessment, Volume 1. Uh, it doesn't have to be, uh, um, you know, just language assessment research. It basically refers, uh, is, is a applicable and suitable for all sorts of research in which statistics have been used just in case you're not in the field of language assessment. Uh, so uh, the first chapter by Dr. Rita Green is about item analysis in language assessment. It provides you with some overview of uh, some of those statistics as I mentioned. And, and chapter eight by Dr. Elif uh, Toprak is um, specifically about t-tests and of course ANOVA and also their assumptions. But let's go back to our uh, analysis. Here we have evidence that our data is normally distributed um, based on the skewness and kurtosis values. This is good news so far for us. Now we want to uh, also uh, check for the second assumption of uh, independent samples t-test and that is the equality or the homogeneity of variances. How do we do that? We need to run a Levine's test of homogeneity of variances. In order to do that we need to open the library car um, if you have not uh, you know installed car you have to install a uh, car first and again like I said in those previous videos I have discussed how to do that a uh, car stands for companion to applied regression by the way now uh, I'm gonna hit control and enter and so it has been called as you see right at the bottom and then uh, I'm gonna uh, run the Levine's test in order to run the Levine's test, we have to write this formula. Uh, Levine, this has to be um, lowercase, test t has to be uppercase, and then uh, the name of the two variables that you want to uh, include in your analysis. Uh, in this case, I've got uh, uh, SW total 
and gen2, which are the name of the two variables. And they're coming from my data set, SEM, and that dollar sign, and then uh, the rest of the information. When you put, put a dollar sign, let me just show you. When you put in a dollar sign, uh, R then prompts you, what do you want to include from your data set, which is already open? And from that, like I said, I want to include uh, SW total. So I scroll down on this menu, uh, and then I'll choose the name of the variable that I want to do. In the same way, I've chosen Gen2, uh, which has got two levels, uh, females and males. And of course, it's got uh, some uh, missing information, as you see from this graph right on the uh, right-hand side. I have demonstrated how to generate this and other types of graph in the previous video. Okay, so let's run the test of homogeneity of variances. Uh, I'm going to hit Control and Enter once again. And as you see from the results, uh, we get a degrees of freedom. Uh, we have only two groups, so the degrees of freedom will be one. Uh, we've got an F test or F value, which is pretty large here, uh, 6.5544. And as a result, the p-value associated with the f-test is also large, which is 0 0.01, uh, actually, I should say, small, excuse me. Uh, this indicates that the uh, homogeneity of variances is probably violated. And the reason is that it's smaller than 0 0.05. Now, there's another school of thought. Uh, some scholars argue that this test is quite sensitive to the sample size. So if you have a very large sample or a very small sample, uh, you should set the alpha value at 0 0.01 and even some I've, I've also seen some publications in which 0 0.001 has been used now this might be an indication somehow that the equality of variances is or is not violated now let's let's just assume that uh, our alpha value is 0 0.05 and based on that I would say the homogeneity of variance is violated as I have notated right here okay so that's step one. Step two is, of course, we want to run a t-test. In order to run a t-test, uh, we'll be just using the same sort of uh, um, library. Uh, doing a t-test is very small. Uh, is very simple. Um, there is a short um, note here or code here, t.test, which is t-test. Uh, and then in brackets, you are supposed to provide the name of the two variables. Uh, which uh, will be the dependent variable coming first, uh, tilde, which means to be regressed on, uh, the independent variable, which is gender. And gender, as I said, it has two levels in this analysis, separated by comma and uh, the name of your data set. Data equals the name of whatever data set that you have opened. And this uh, provides you with a brief and quick um, solution that you need so let's just hit control and uh, enter and go down this window let me open it completely for you here we have run a t-test a wells two samples t-test in which the t value is very large as you can see it's 11 point uh, 718 with a degrees of freedom of 1777.9 which is uh, pretty large and the p-value which is very small it's written in scientific notation um, so our alternative hypothesis was or I mean our, our null hypothesis was that there is no significant difference between the two mean scores one of the means is 13.93 uh, something and the other mean for males is 11.27 something. Um, so our working null hypothesis was that whatever difference you see here is not statistically significant and it's just due to chance. Uh, but the t-test proves otherwise. It simply shows that, well, actually, the differences that you observe here is not due to chance. It's statistically significant. Uh, so there is a significant difference in the writing skill. I'm going to move to the right hand side here of this window of the writing skill of your participants um, uh, across the two gender groups. And uh, that will be it. Then we have got a confidence interval of 95%, which means that we have set our alpha level at 0 0.05. 
and the confidence interval here is uh, between 2.23 and 3.13 um, we can uh, actually we can uh, change that let me go back to our code uh, let me just drag this down a little bit this code uh, is simple is very easy to run but it assumes that equality uh, of, of variances or homogeneity of variances is met now what if the equality of variances is not met we can just expand on this code by adding mu equals zero so the rest of it is exactly the same as what I have above mu equals zero means that the mean differences is nothing or is just due to chance and the alternative test we want to choose is two-sided look at the bra uh, the quotation marks on two sides are two-sided and the dot between them F uh, followed by a comma and then conf that's the confidence interval uh, the default is 95 if you like you can you can change it to 99 um, I'm just gonna just keep it as 95 because I want to compare it with what I did previously now variance dot ick which is equality of variances uh, if it's not assumed then you're gonna put uh, put down F if it's assumed in other words if you have uh, evidence that the the two variances of the two groups are the same you just need to write down T for this analysis however I'm gonna choose F just to indicate that well there is no equality of variances so I'm gonna compare the results of this analysis against the previous one which assumed otherwise now the last protocol here or the last uh, uh, part of the syntax or argument is uh, paired equals F this simply means that this test is not a paired samples t-test so this also implies that if you want to do a paired samples t-test you can use exactly the same protocol um, right here as I have highlighted but this one should be set to T which stands for true which indicates that well, well my, my analysis is a paired samples t-test let me change it back to F so let's run this and see if the test gives me a different output so run and here we go I want to compare it with the, the section here it's a Welsh two samples t-test the T values are the same the um, of course the degrees of freedom will also be the same the P values are the same as well um, as you can see from the P value the P value are just the same um, the mean the estimation of mean has to remain the same because we're looking at exactly the same sample and also uh, the 95 percent confidence interval also is well the same so th there is uh, parity in the outputs I don't see any any differences whatsoever so this simply indicates that uh, we can r rely on the results of our t-test and we can assume that there is a significant difference between the two groups in favor of females which in other words means that females writing score is significantly uh, above or greater than that of males now what if we change the uh, confidence interval from 95 percent to 99 percent let's do a quick uh, test here uh, ran the analysis for 95 for 99 percent uh, the only difference that I can observe here is that uh, uh, the confidence interval has changed as you see you can compare these two confidence intervals um, yeah here we have a slightly larger confidence interval all right so th that's not a big deal because the p-value remains the same uh, and the t-value remains the same and therefore the relationship between uh, the, the dependent and independent variable also remain the same finally we need to estimate the effect size uh, I, I have skipped this part you know this just means if you want to learn more about t statistics you can just put a quotation mark and put down t dot test and run it and you'll get statistics under help I mean uh, statistics help under help 
uh, and, and that's it so I leave that for you if you want to explore further finally effect size we need to install uh, this library R statistics so I'm gonna uh, call it now so it has been opened uh, there are two codes that you would want to run for a sample which is uh, large enough like the present sample this one is good um, so the data set name the um, percentage sign the greater than sign again percentage sign Cohen's D underline Cohen's underline D your uh, dependent variable regressed on independent variable so that tilde as I mentioned is regressed on separated by comma equality of variances we can say assumed uh, so you, you put down true or if you're not really confident that the equality of variances is assumed you're gonna write down false uh, so I'm gonna keep it as true for this analysis note that for equality of variances we have to note var dot equal equals then the equal sign whereas in the previous analysis in the t-test we had var dot eq okay uh, I'm gonna run the f this analysis and there we go we got a Cohen's D uh, indication of effect sizes the effect size is 0 0.554 this means that uh, the females writing score is around half a standard deviation uh, the mean of the females writing score is about half a standard deviation larger than the uh, males uh, writing score so 0 0.05 is around half of one standard de deviation that's basically what effect size means and in terms of magnitude we interpret it as moderate because it's at 0 0.05 um, there is a lot more about effect sizes again I have made videos uh, there are particularly three videos on how to interpret effect sizes I've also provided citations to some papers and uh, journal art articles and book chapters in the three uh, <clears throat> uh, three uh, videos that uh, you'll see here please uh, look at the uh, description section of this video for links to these three or, or more videos okay and last but not least let's assume that your sample size is smaller than 50 again in those previous videos I have discussed how when and how to use what type of effect size for sample sizes uh, in which fall below 50 we need to use hedges G so we make a correction hedges G was first published in uh, hedges and Alkins uh, 1985's paper we need to make a correction we're going to use the same formula uh, but what we need to add is to add a comma and then just write hedges okay it gives you uh, the right uh, formula for that so I'm gonna click yes I want to use this and true so hedges correction is going to be applied it's basically the same thing I have as I've written here before uh, right uh, underneath uh, the first one so let's run this I've run it and I've gotten exactly the same effect size so even after applying the hedges correction I have gotten exactly the same sample uh, effect size it's still of course moderate 0 0.554 uh, that's why the hedges uh, correction is more appropriate for the samples that are smaller than 50 in my case I have a much larger sample it's about 1800 people now uh, before closing this video I should say that the data from this and the previous video come from a uh, um, a research project called core 2016 which has been uh, funded by the Ministry of Education the research project has been uh, led by uh, dr. Melvin Chen I will provide the link to his website and uh, you know you can if you're interested you can go through the works that he has published and other list of uh, projects that he has done all right so this uh, should be pretty good enough for this presentation that brings me to the end of the video thank you very much for your attention if you like the video please give it a like and have a great day